Episode 2, Turnabout Corner. As long as we draw breath, the Wheel of Fate turns. Spinning big crimes and little crimes together. And when the wheel stops... Look at all these graphics, man. You die. Damn. How poetic. June 15th, 9, 12 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. You know what time it is, guys. Welcome back to Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Episode 2, Case 2, whatever you want to call it, we're here and we're doing it. We had a good time with the first case. It was very intriguing, especially that Phoenix is back immediately. And from this intro right here, I think I saw Phoenix there with his with his papa hat on. I'm pretty sure I saw his daughter in that little intro as well. So, I don't know who else those other people were. The dude playing a, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, oh man, I already forgot what it was called harmonica jesus i was gonna say it when he was playing it and i forgot there was a dude playing a harmonica it looked like and then at the end there was a dude at a cart shooting a dude another dude in the park so that looks like it's gonna be a good time anyway the end of last case apollo won his case uh, and basically put his own mentor behind bars or at least sort of but we uh we got phoenix off so now phoenix is gonna hire apollo Phoenix isn't even a lawyer anymore. There's so many things going on. Let's just let's just go. Let's just go with it. Okay, here we go. This is a good starting point. Here we go. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with Apollo's voice still. I haven't really 100% landed on what I'm doing with it. I, I would rather him just have my voice regular, maybe with a little bit of inflection. I guess I could just do that. The, Apollo and Phoenix talking to each other will get real confusing, but not that I really care that much. But, yeah. Anyway... I mean, I don't mind giving him the Mega Man Pro Tag voice. I just need to stop devolving it into a dude bro voice. Phoenix could be a little bit older voice, I guess, because he is older now. He's not the he's not the Phoenix of yesteryear, which was several years ago now, more than seven years, honestly, because his daughter is alive. Like he has a daughter who looks way more than seven years old. So, yeah. Anyway, two months have passed since Mr. Gavin's arrest. And he's all unshaven and shit. I know, right? My first trial and I lost both my mentor and my job. Damn. Yeah, I'll admit it. I was screwed. But even when I hit bottom, I told myself I'd never come here. Honest. And yet here we are. It's a spaghetti! And a hat. And a magic bunch of magic tricks over there on the left. Pretty obvious who all that belongs to. But anyway, here being... Here being the legendary Wright and Co. law offices. Who's the and Co. if there's no more Wright? Or, basically, who else worked with Mr. Wright? I wonder if he had other protégés along the way. Okay, Justice, time to stop trembling. Ah, uh, you must be here for the interview. Right this way. I'm assuming this is the daughter. Can I call it right? Huh? Yup, called it. Hello there. You found the right place. Welcome. Of course she hit the pun immediately. Uh, uh, what's with this girl? Well now, shall we begin? Begin? What? Right. First things first. Any special talents? Um, talents? Yes, well, you must have at least one. Well, uh, I guess. Uh, defending? Defending. An unusual talent, but it'll do. With a little jazzing up, of course. You think so? Let's give it a go, shall we? Huh? Go ahead, show me. Defend. Just give it all you've got. Don't hold back now. Uh, what are you talking about? I can't just defend here. First lesson. A professional can perform anywhere. Thanks. We want people to be laughing with us. Not at us. Thanks. But I'm not sure why they should be laughing at all. What? What exactly do you think you came here to do? W um, defend? No? Excuse me, but do you know where you are? Let me guess, Wright and Co. Law, uh, or 
It's still called Law Offices, isn't it? Anyway. Huh? The Wright & Co. Law Offices, right? Oh. I was afraid of that. Don't worry, you're not the first. Look what's going on. Oh, look what's going on here. Who are you? Look, oh, I said, look, what's going on here? Who are you? I came here to meet with the person in charge. How did he forget her already? It's only been two months. How are you going to not remember this girl? She just, she shows up in a hat, all magical, giving you a card to help you win your case, and you're going to forget her? I doubt it. Come on, Apollo. Come on, man. You're supposed to be an attorney. You're supposed to fucking remember those details. Lock that shit in your brain, man. How do you not remember this girl? Anyway, I came here to meet the, with the person in charge. Well, you've apparently made no fewer than two mistakes. Mistakes? But I got a call from Mr. Wright this morning. Perhaps you should go read the sign out front again? What's there to read? Look, it says right there. Oh. Why does it say Wright Talent Agency? Oops. Welcome to the Wright Talent, Talent Agency, where you're... You've always come to the right place. I'm Trucy Wright, CEO. I'm a magician. Trucy Wright? True. See? Oh my god. <sighs> She's a magician, guys. <laughs> it all came flooding back. The trial. That girl. Hello, sir. Please pick a card. Duh. There you go. Jesus. I don't know why you're so hard to remember her. She's not like she dressed any differently. She looked the same the whole time, man. That's right. She's my daughter. Trucy, right? Here, check out our flyer. So, what's your name? Also, I haven't really talked about this yet, but if this is Phoenix's daughter, I'm assuming that this is Maya's daughter also. And, the, and another big reason why I say that is because look at her bounce around. She has a very particular Maya demeanor about her, doesn't she? The looks on her face, the bouncing thing where she stands here and bounces in place. All very Maya uh, mannerisms. So, we'll see. And also she's enamored with magic. Maya was definitely into the whole magic thing with Maximilian Galactica. So, like things like that, details that come together, it makes sense. But the real question is, is she also a spirit medium? Or is that shit a thing of the past? That's the real question I have. But we'll see. Anyway. So, what's your name? Apollo. Apollo Justice, attorney at law. Oh. Okay, the real game begins. We haven't actually had any investigation phase or whatever you want to call it. A story phase of the game yet. It's all just been trial, trial, trial. So, this is going to be how this is going to be set up. All right. I mean, here's our normal stuff. I guess we'll just start by talking to her. Let's talk about that right talent agency, girl. So, is this really a talent agency? You bet. Daddy started it seven years ago when he quit law. Of course, we only have two people signed up right now. Two people? Does that include you? Trucy Wright, magician extraordinaire. I've done a lot of stage shows. Paid, too. I'm a professional, you know. Uh, right... I promise you'll come to one of my shows, okay? Let's see. Oh, and the other person our agency represents is Phoenix Wright, pianist extraordinaire, extraordinaire. <laughs> so the talent agency is just them. It's just the rights. <laughs> Talking often forces progression. You'd examine things first. Okay, I can examine after I do this first conversation. That's not a bad idea. You're not wrong. I was just going to go from left to right, but examining is probably a good way to get through this room. I should start with that. You're right. But let's get through this first uh, bullet point here. But that's hilarious that they <laughs> they uh, they have a talent agency and the only people signed to it are them. So that's not that you haven't hired anyone then is what you're telling me. Your dad, in other words, didn't he say he couldn't play the piano? <laughs> Our agency doesn't see that as a problem. Why there? Are, huh? Why there are many magicians who can't do magic. At least you're optimistic, I'll give you that. <laughs> Indeed. Alright, we'll talk more about her in a second. Let's get to the examination of stuff. Because DJ has a good point. If I go through all the dialogue, it might progress and I might have to move on to do something else. Or somebody else might show up and interject or whatever. Let's just examine this room. First off, there's someone in this picture. Who that? An old sepia-tinted photo of a man in a silk top hat. That's my favorite magician. I want to be just like him someday. 
Well, it doesn't look like Max Galactica, but maybe it's somebody else. Also, Nacho, not now, man. Why do you have to show up at the worst times? Thank you. He decided to go away immediately, which is nice. Anyway, I want to be just like him someday. Sure. Nice. Guess it's good to have a role model, even if he's got to be well over 100. How rude. What do you mean, how rude? How do you know? What? Did you read my mind? There are all sorts of strange paraphernalia sitting on top of the piano. Those are my magic props. Practice, practice, practice. A professional never leaves their weapons far from reach. But you can't play the piano with all this junk on it. Uh, no one plays here anyway, and the neighbors complain. I guess Mr. Wright really can't play. It's all a farce, man. Maybe he's, like, actually a private investigator or some shit. I mean, we already know about his poker playing thing. That's probably where he makes his real money. But anyway, although he said he doesn't play for money. He plays for, you know... I don't know. We don't know anything yet. I'm sure there's a reason behind everything Wright has been doing for seven years, but we're going to have to just learn that as we go. A blue silk hat, just like the one Trucy's wearing. Oh, that's just for show. Don't wear it, please. Last thought from my mind, honest. I put it there so clients can see it and know who I am. Nothing says magician like a silk top hat. I mean, I guess. Sure. A strange split box leers at me from the wall. Um, is this one of those boxes for cutting people in half? That's right. This cabinet's used for an illusion called the zigzag. I've seen one on TV, but why is one just sitting here in your office? Oh, it's a little big for me, you see. So I'm using it as furniture. Hats in the top, shirts in the middle, and pants down below. I think it's a nice touch, don't you? It's not exactly what I'd call a welcoming decor. I mean, it's not too bad. Like, that's actually not, not, not a bad magician level, like, uh, piece of furniture. Yeah, I don't know if Phoenix gets paid by the bar to get for his poker thing or whatever, but yeah. He's got to be making money somehow. But anyway. Yo, it's the plant. Didn't the plant have a name? I don't remember the name. No, I don't, DJ. But I remember it having a name. Ah, don't touch Mr. Charlie. Mr. Charlie? He's been in this office much longer than I have. Daddy's mentor had a great fondness for Mr. Charlie. He's lived here since Daddy was a rookie attorney. Huh. Mr. Charlie. Right. Now I take care of him. Yeah, that's cool. Mr. Charlie. I don't even remember that plant's being named being Charlie, but man, I have to go back and look at the tapes. All these legal books must be Mr. Wright's leftovers. There's a lot of unrelated books in here, too. One trick a day, magic for idiots. You'd think a pro magician would aim a bit higher. Damn. Get wrecked, Trucy. I'm going to accidentally call her Trudy. I already know it. I know it's Trucy, but Trudy is going to come out of my mouth a lot. That table doesn't look very sturdy. Yeah, you've never seen one of these before? Or, you never seen one of these? It's a magic table. So, like, you make this teapot disappear? So you might think, but that's not it. Before your very eyes, the contents of the pot change! From Earl Grey to Darjeeling! Kind of hard to see the difference, I think. Yeah, dude. From one tea to another. How, how, what kind of, you think it's a bad trick? You're a bad trick. How dare you even judge, Paula? How dare you? What's this? Hula hoop? That's one of those hula hoop things everyone was crazy about way back when. Really? I had no idea these were that popular. I'm not so bad with one myself, actually. I got them hips, dog. <laughs> uh, I'm still learning. So you can really make someone levitate with it? Show me. Uh, I have no idea how. It's just a normal hula hoop, isn't it? Uh, uh. What's with this plate of floating spaghetti here? Like, the fork is floating? At first I thought it was laying across this box. But that's definitely in the foreground. It's definitely floating. Maybe she froze it in place. Whoa, that fork is floating! Not! Why do you have a plate of plastic spaghetti here? That right there is the whole reason I became a magician. Do tell. I saw a plate just like that in a restaurant once. The floating fork looks so real, that's what I knew. Someday, I'd make magic more amazing than that spaghetti. That's interesting for a motivator, but sure. Alright, did I get everything? I don't see any more, uh red circles anywhere. It looks like I pretty much snaked through this one pretty good. I don't think there's any other directions I can go in here. So, 
back to our conversation we were having before I was so rudely interrupted by my own ADD and looking around the room. What's up, Trucy? Tell me about yourself. So you're his, uh, you're Phoenix Wright's daughter? That's right. After Daddy quit law seven years ago, I promised I would keep him fed. So I'm kind of his sugar daddy. <laughs> Get it? No. I'm in charge of this whole office, too. Pretty amazing for a young lass of 15 when you... She's 15. Okay. I was like, she can't be, like, super old, right? Because if she was super old, then holy shit, what, like, 20 years have passed? But no, she, okay, she's 15. That's still a lot of years. As it, that means at least 15 years have passed since the end of the last Ace Attorney game. At least. Who knows how many years in between before, you know, when Phoenix and Mai actually get together and have kids and blah, and have this kid and all that, you know? <sighs> What's up, punk? Welcome to the stream. How you doing today, man? Hope you're doing well. Welcome to some more Apollo Justice. Anyway, yes, it's amazing. You're 15. 15? Uh, how old's Mr. Wright? Daddy? Oh, he's 33 this year. Wait, what? That can't be right. I'm sure there's a good explanation. I hope. Huh. That can't be right. Maybe this isn't Maya's kid. Hmm. Or maybe... Maybe she's not his biological kid. Also possible. She just... She reminds me of Maya so much with the way she stands and bounces around, though. I don't know. Maybe that's just because she grew up around Maya also. We're going to find out details as we go. I'm definitely just speculating at this point. Anyway, you're not doing too bad there, punk. You just beat Dragon Quarter last night? Nice. I still need to play that game someday. It's the only Breath of Fire game I haven't played at this point. At least, yeah, it's the only one that counts. I played all the first four. I've never played that one, though. I need to play it someday. I've heard good and bad things about it. Mostly bad, but still probably a playable game. Anyway, let's learn about your dad there, Trucy. Um, about Mr. Wright giving up law. It was because of that incident seven years ago, wasn't it? Uh, you know about that? Not the details. I remember the news, though. It was a big deal. So I hear. I was too young to understand what was going on. I'll ask Daddy about it next time I get a chance. Daddy, right. That reminds me. About Mr. Wright. He gave me a call this morning to come in. Daddy's not here right now. He's in the hospital. Wait, what? The hospital? Yeah, he's on strict bed rest until he gets better. Better? Wh what? Okay. Which hospital is Mr. Wright in? I'll pay him a visit. Oh, the Hickfield Clinic. It's quite close. Hickfield? Okay. Right. Well, I'll be going now, and I'll, uh, I'll give this showbiz gig some thought, okay? Wait, I'll go with you. So, yeah, progressing dialogue would have made us miss on examining the room. All right. June 15th, 9.45 a.m., Hickfield Clinic. This room is full of DVDs and a very, very, very small piano. <laughs> uh, what's up, Omega? Welcome to the stream. How you doing? You wouldn't recommend that Breath of Fire game for everyone, but you enjoyed it? That's good to hear. You can see why people don't like it, but there was a one, only one part at the end that I felt was kind of bullshit. The rest of it wasn't too bad. I mean, I've played a lot of bad games. I can't imagine it's a bad game overall. It's just not as good as the other Breath of Fires is what I always hear. So... I'm definitely interested in trying it. There's a lot of PS2 RPGs I am still, still behind on, but <sighs> I'll try to make a dent someday. You're also someone who plays Hoshigami. We know, we know, man, we know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's say what's up to Wright, I guess. Phoenix specifically. So this is Mr. Wright's hospital, bro. I was just thinking if we see this fucking guy again. Oh my god. He's still walking around. Acting like he fucking runs the place. This motherfucker. Dude, I don't even know if I remember what voice I gave this guy. It's been so long. I'm actually expecting to you know, see other returning characters now too. But if it's been fucking seven years at least. Now I'm not going to say 15 years. Because I don't know when Trucy was born or who she even is. Maybe she's not even who she says she is. Maybe she's somebody else entirely. I don't know. Alright, anyway. Um, what am I going to do with this guy's voice? I remember I gave him like the... I think I gave him like a crackhead voice. Like he's like... <laughs> Visitor, <sorry. laughs> Something like that. You don't trust anyone with gold teeth since... FMAB. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? 
Who has gold teeth in FMA Brotherhood? Uh... Wow, it's been a minute since I've watched it, so I'm trying to think. The Doctor? The Doctor. I guess I know who you're talking about. I'm trying to picture what he looks like, though. But yeah, gold teeth. Almost never a good sign, at least in when depicted in a show or a game or something. Anyway, visitors, are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, are you the doctor? Uh, yep. <laughs> Dr. Hitfield's the name. <laughs> Good morning, doctor. Oh, hey there, Trucy. <laughs> Cute as ever. <laughs> Is this daddy's room? Oh, oh yeah. Except he's gone for a morning checkup. <laughs> Be back soon. How are you, Miss Trucy? <laughs> Got any places you'd like examined? <laughs> uh, doctor? Oh, there he's back. Uh, doctor, uh, the nurse was looking for you. Why, if it isn't the, the daddy, uh, the cutest little thing in town. <laughs> I guess I'll be off then. <laughs> Later, Trucy. <laughs> wow, uh, what an odd bird that guy was. Good morning. Didn't expect you so soon, Apollo. Uh, Mr. Wright. Yo, what up? Let me examine your room before I talk to you, though, because I'm a nosy bastard. What, what's this? What's that? What's everything else? What's that on TV? It looks like some sort of action hero show. Oh, I know that one. That's the Sniffling Samurai. Oh, boy, we have more samurais. His booger flick attack is a big hit with the grade school crowd. Booger flick attack? Oh, my God. I had no idea you liked this kind of stuff, Mr. Wright. Well, what else is there to do when you're stuck in a bed? Besides, the episodes will just keep piling up if I don't keep up, you know? Um, yeah. Try not buying them. <laughs> Now's the only time I get to watch and write up my reports. Your reports? It's a long story. Like a lot of things, actually. <sighs> can I can I go out on a limb and say he watches this stuff? Because he has to ha re remember or tell Maya about how he catches up <laughs> with certain samurai shows. You know Maya's going to show up at some point. She has to. She has to. And that doctor dude is super guilty. If he hasn't done something, he will soon. Well, first of all, Punk, that, that, that doctor character, which we didn't get his name, but that creepy doctor guy with the with the gold teeth, he's actually from previous games. Um, I don't remember if he showed up in the third game, but I know he was in the second game for sure. I can't remember if he was in the third game. But he basically worked at the... Like he, he's, a, he's a patient at the clinic, and he's just crazy, and he walks around like he's a doctor. That's basically... That, at least that was the idea back then. I don't know if that's still the case, but I'm assuming it still is. Anyway, let's keep, keep examining this room. But what I was going to say is, Phoenix has to keep up with these shows for Maya, and then they have to, then he has to report back to her about what he learned or whatever, you know? <laughs> that's what I'm... He has to make book reports or DVD reports about what he watched. And I'm not sure about Phoenix breaking the fourth wall. I'm not sure what, what he said that might have done so. And also, oh man, as soon as I'm going to start talking again, here comes the kitty. Hi. Now I got Danny in my face. Hi, Danny. Are you going to lay down or do I have to kick you down already? Because if you're going to be here, you got to be comfy. you got to lay down. All right, let's keep examining. More DVDs. Mr. Wright's bed. It's really messy. Look how messy this is. You're just hopeless without me, aren't you, Daddy? Yikes. She's attempting to clean up. Look out. <laughs> you got me. What can I say? I was raised in a barn. Try not to let word get out, Apollo, if you don't mind. Yeah, it might ruin your illustrious career pretending to play the piano. <laughs> exactly. Like, sure. A swaying, spiraling stack of DVD cases. The Steel Samurai, the Nickel Samurai, the Pink Princess, the Zappy Samurai, Electric Bugaboo. <laughs> They're all children's action hero shows. This kid I know keeps sending them to me. Huh. Like a niece or nephew? Something like that. Quite the collection. This kid's parents must be really generous with their allowance. Funny, Mr. Wright doesn't seem the type that kids would like. I mean, we know one child that he hung out with in previous games. I wonder... I mean, thinking about that... She's got to be grown up too, Pearl, right? She's got to be nice and grown up as well. Like, unless... 
I don't know. Let's just keep going. The first thing you heard when you joined the stream is, you're just hopeless without me, Daddy. Did you like that? Did you like that one, David? Did you like that line? Did you like that? <laughs> anyway, what's up, man? Welcome. <laughs> uh, this looks like a child's toy piano. Yes, it does. Gotta practice. Wouldn't want my fingers to get stiff. A pro always keeps his weapon close at hand. Wow. I think I heard that line earlier. Shall I play you a tune? Uh, no thanks. Ah, how unfortunate. I so rarely get a chance to play. Bottle? That's that grape juice, dog. Ah, uh, Daddy, you snuck some grape juice in again. The doctor said you weren't supposed to drink that here. Trucy, look at the label. Oh. Deep sea mineral water. That's fine, I guess. I switched the labels. Don't tell Trucy, okay? What can I say? The man loves his grape juice. <laughs> getting drunk, getting crunk up in this bitch. Anyway, you had you crack it up. Well, you're welcome, David, for the for the pre bedtime laughter. You go have yourself a nice sleep, sir. See ya. <laughs> See you in the morning. You know, in the afternoon when you wake up. <laughs> have a good sleep, man. Later. This song kind of goes hard, by the way. I wasn't really commenting on it. I was just kind of bobbing my head to it, not even realizing. But the song goes kind of hard. All right, anything else I can examine around here? Uh, nothing new, it looks like. So, yeah, let's talk about right and what you're in here for, sir. Because what the hell are you doing here? What happened, homie? So what happened? Who could have imagined it? Me, victim of a hit and run. A hit and... You were hit by a car? Oh, he tried to swerve, I'll give him that. Picture me tossed 30 feet through the air. Only stopping when my head hit that telephone pole. You hit a telephone pole with your head? Are you okay? Thankfully, my only injury was a sprained ankle. He really is as lucky as they say. He got hit by a car. He hit his head on a pole. And all he hurt was his ankle. I'm just... Things don't add up around here, man. <laughs> anyway, let's learn about Trucy and maybe get some details there. There's something that, well, it just doesn't sit right with me. I just can't believe you have a daughter, Mr. Right? And... And she's so big, and not fat, uh, you know what I mean. Oh, Trucy's still a child. Daddy, how many times do I have to remind you? I'm not a child anymore. <laughs> but you'll always be daddy's little baby girl to me, Trucy. <laughs> My foot? I'm not buying it. Ah, uh, something you should know about Trucy. She's a ma oh, she's a magician, right? She told me. Not a mere stage magician. She's a genius. <laughs> oh, Daddy. You'll soon come to appreciate her talent. You can just tell me things instead of insinuating them, dude. Come on now. Stop being weird about it. Also, Maro's here. Hi, Maro. Welcome to the stream. I figure you'll probably be lurking today as well, but I appreciate you popping in, even if you're just saying hi to David and bye to David. <laughs> All right. I guess let's learn about this whole talent agency thing. So why did you contact me? What could the right talent agency possibly want with me? No need to get prickly now. Hey, I didn't ask to be dragged in like this. Huh? But didn't you come to the office of your own free will anyway? Well, yeah, of course. Help, we're in big trouble here at the office. Big! I thought someone was dying. So you don't think this is big trouble? My talent agency represents only two people, and one of them is in the hospital. That's right, Daddy. How are we going to pay this month's rent and the groceries? Yeah, that's the problem with such a tight operation. It's a symbi symbiotic relationship. When one of us falls, the other two must fall. Deep voice Phoenix sounds a bit cursed, but better than Surfer Apollo. I mean, you're just going to have to live with my choices, DJ, whether you like it or not. So whatever I do is what you're going to have to live with. But I agree, doing Apollo as a surfer dude the whole game would have been rough, so... And not even surfer dude, I was, try I was trying to make it be more like what I do with Mega Man, which is not surfer dude. It's more like a... Like a... Anime pro tag that's like overdramatic kind of voice, you know what I mean? Like not good voice acted, bad voice acted on purpose. That kind of thing. But sometimes it just evolves into surfer dude, unfortunately. <laughs> 
I see. It just sounds curse is perfectly acceptable. Fair enough. Anyway, hey, this isn't exactly a suitable conversation to be having with a 15-year-old kid. In any case, if Apollo here can't help you, you'll have to transfer to a new school again. No, I can't. I only just made friends. How could you do this to me? To us? Polly? Polly? Don't tell me they have the fucking bird. Huh? What? Now it's my fault? Or wait. Are you- uh, She's calling Apollo Polly. That's what she's doing. Oh boy, nicknames already. On that note, how about you come work for us? I've got the perfect client for you already lined up. A- uh, A- uh, A client? You mean I get to do my job? I get to defend in court? Uh, Alright, I'll hear what you gotta say. <clears throat> you got him, Daddy. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> now it's time to reel him in. It's official. I'm scared. <laughs> As you should be. Let me take a sip of this water real quick. Before my voice devolves into nothing. And you can't hear what I'm saying anymore. <clears throat> Also, hey, Flammy, welcome in. How you doing? Let's learn about this client. Alright, so who's the client? Oh, yes, here. Take a look at the map and I'll explain. Okay. Last night I left the office just before 9 o'clock. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I was going to that Indochi... Indochine? Like Indochinese? Indochine pasta joint. Aldente... Aldentes. Holy shit. Aldente, man. Aldentes. We gotta say it like it's spelled. I know it's al dente, but al dentes. I know it starts already. So much, so many puns in one sentence. My brain hurts. Anyway, Flemmy, you need to go eat. Then go eat, homie. Return after you have filled your belly with sustenance. So anyway, he was going to the Indochine pasta joint. Al dente. Al dentes. I play piano there, of course. That's when it happened. The car sent me flying, nicked the telephone pole, and zoomed away. Creepy, huh? Just a tad. It's almost as creepy as hearing you tell the story like it was no big deal. The car sped off in this direction. Okay. So, good luck. Wait, huh? <laughs> that is not... What? Are you... I'm not an investigator, dude. I'm a fucking lawyer. You wanted a client, didn't you? Well, I'm your client. Oh, motherfucker. Find the guy who knocked me into the that telephone pole. <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on. I'm a defense attorney, not a detective. Yeah, exactly. Don't worry. Once you found the guy, I intend to sue him. Then you can stick it to him in court. <laughs> I'm not a prosecutor either. I'm sorry, but this is crazy. I'm going home, man. Don't get so worked up. It was just a joke. Oh, it was a joke? You joke now, Phoenix? Is that how these things work? Huh? Oh, Daddy. Sorry, Apollo. He just loves jokes, you know. Even the ones that aren't very funny. Your real client should be stopping by the office any time now. The office? You mean the talent agency? No harm in going. It's not like I have anything else to do. One more thing. Do look into my accident, too, would you? I marked the scene of the tragedy on this map. Well, we know it's all going to be related now. Oh, boy. It's right in front of this park. Should be easy to find. So he's gonna make me investigate this after all. Son of a bitch. I don't think we've ever had a map of the area around his office before. <laughs> if that was a joke, then nobody's laughing. I agree, Omega. I'm certainly not. Alright, double checking. There's nothing new, nothing new to examine here, but I'm assuming not. Let's just go. Hey, hey, it's Berserker! What is up, homie? Feel like I haven't seen you in a hot minute, homie. What is up? Hope you're doing well, sir. Should I present him my attorney's badge? What do you think about this? What's that? Looks strangely familiar. How could you not recognize an attorney's badge? It's been seven years. I've forgotten a lot of things, okay? I guess some seven years are longer than others. True that. What about this thing you just showed me? I've marked the location of the accident on your map. Find the criminal who knocked me into that telephone pole. I... Well, I guess we're moving on. You're a huge Ace Attorney fan? Went well out of your way to actually watch this now that you're actually playing more? Well, I'm glad to see you. Don't think you have to be here live. Trust that, you know, 
they'll all be on YouTube later, but I appreciate you wanting to hang out while I do this. I really do. Just be happy I'm doing it live and not, you know, recording it, which is what I usually do for visual novel stuff. Um, but yeah. I still feel bad that I haven't played AI Somnium Files 2 when I totally bought that with intention to play it, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But now I'm playing this damn game. Thanks, yearly poll. Not that I'm mad at it. I've been meaning to play these games for years. I'm just glad this trilogy finally came out. Back to the talent agency with us. Let's see who this client is. I wonder if it's going to be somebody we recognize or we're going to meet a new, the new character. June 15th, 10.05 a.m. Right, talent agency. Hey, hey, hey. And yes, thank you for adding it to the poll, DJ. I appreciate it. The personal interaction is better when it's games you're more invested in. Fair enough, Berserker. Fair enough. Well, sit back, comment when you need to, and enjoy the ride. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey! I don't know who this is. How long you plan on making me wait, eh? Who this? Ah, good morning. Who the fuck? Well, new character. Um... He's got a ramen bowl on his head, first of all, and his hair is kind of looks like noodly, so he might as well just have a bowl of ramen spilled on his head. He also has got that harmonica, which I seen in the intro, so this is that guy from the intro. Um, I don't know what kind of voice he's gonna have right now, but uh, hey there, Trucha doll. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, that's definitely a ramen bowl on his head for sure. Sounds like your pops had a bit of a rough spot, eh? Oh, that's all's well that ends well, I guess. This is our client? Hey, so this is that Paulo fellow, eh? Uh, yes. The name's Apollo. Look at him here. Look at him there. Arms all crossed, ready to fight? Yes, sir. Uh, you don't mean that literally, do you? The boss told you what I need, right? Dump me down now, Apollo. Don't worry about your defense, sir. I'm on it. Defense? Your noodle half cooked? It's too late for defense. My castle's been stormed. My keep's been kept. My noodle stand's been stolen. N noodle? You know, Mr. Eldoon from the noodle stand, don't you, Polly? No nicknames, please. And no, of course I don't know him. You're new in these parts? Uh, not really. Then you know the best noodles in town Eldoon's noodles. Eldoon's noodles. That's a palindrome, by the way. It didn't hit me at first, but I just... Yeah, it's definitely a palindrome of Noodle. Eldoon Noodle. Uh, whose noodles? My noodles! Uh, help me out here, Trucy Doll! <laughs> of course his name is Eldoon. It's, it's, it's Mr. Noodle's Noodles. This guy... This Mr. Guy... This is Mr. Guy Noodle! Eldoon! Our client! <laughs> I'm gonna see that word and want to say noodle, even though it's not. It's noodle backwards. <laughs> Mr. Eldoon. Mr. Guy Eldoon. He's Noodle Guy. Guy Noodle. Noodle Guy. Anyway, he's our client. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us what the problem is, Mr. Eldoon. Oh, shit. Anything for you, Trusty Doll? Alright, anything else I can examine in here before I get back to it? Anything? Anything? <clears throat> okay. Just seeing if anything new popped up or whatever. Alright, well, let's chat with Mr. Eldoon. <clears throat> I need water again, damn it. Still got that morning trot. Alright, who this guy? So, you run a noodle stand, Mr. Eldoon? Guy Eldoon's name? Noodles in my game. The secret's in the soup. I've been searching for the perfect soup for a year and a half. Oh, uh, that's not that long, really. My family's been noodle men for generations. Got a lot of expectation on my shoulders. I also have noodles coming out of my hat. Onto my head. Fifteen fathers passing the noodle to fifteen sons. That's a pretty old noodle. That's a pretty old noodle indeed. I, and a fool that I was, I pushed it away. I rebelled against my pops and picked another livelihood. But that didn't turn out so well. With a name like Eldoon, noodles is my destiny. Oh. There was no denying it. Salty broth runs through these veins, boy. So it was like destiny that you became what you are. 
Right, destiny's the word. Oh, I fought it. But in the end, I was bound by this twisted noodle of fate. Not a mental image I care to linger on. So last year, I started my noodle stand. The 15th generation of Eldoon's noodle. O okay, cool. Glad we got your background. Tell me about it. <clears throat> um, so tell me more about Eldoon's noodles. You don't know the genius that are my noodles? I make them so salty, why, they're saltier than, than salt. Now I really don't want to find out. Daddy's a regular at his noodle stand. Of course he is. He frequented my pop stand back during his attorney days, too. Yep, him and his assistant. I'm sorry. I'll be sure to drop by your stand soon. Wish you could, sonny! Uh... Uh... Heck, I wish I could. I'd give anything for a bowl about right now. About now. Whatever, he said. What do you mean? He just told us that the stand was gone and stolen, dude. He, he already mentioned it. Fun fact, this is supposed to be the noodle stand that Phoenix and Maya always visited, except the localization made like her like burgers. Wait, really? So the so the Japanese hey, don't be chewing on my cords. Uh the Japanese version was noodles, and they always talked about going to eat burgers in the American version. That's hilarious, actually. Alright, little one. If you're gonna start being ornery, then you're going back to the floor. She was so comfy in my arms, but I think I moved around too much for her. Oh well. Japanifornia. Something like that. Fucking burgers. Dude, California's not even known for burgers. That's so silly to think that. But whatever. They pulled the four kids. Yeah, they did. But alright, anyway, so it's supposed to be noodles. So now we're talking about the noodle stand that they always went and ate at. Got it. Kind of weird that they went back to the proper translation, but I guess it makes sense because the otherwise all the noodle puns and jokes wouldn't even make sense. But anyway. What do you mean? It was stolen! My stand! Gone! Stolen? Tell me about it. Tell me all about it. It was last night. I was doing my rounds, blowing my whistle. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's like an ice cream truck's bell, but louder. He even gets complaints. Uh-huh. <laughs> now you're just trying to butter me up. That sounded more like a the blues than a whistle. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's in a harmonica, not a whistle, but sure. Closed up my stand for the night and parked by the house. Then this morning, dark and early, it was gone. My keep, my castle, oh! Maybe some bum carted it off? Just guessing here. Well, I don't care who did it. Without that stand, I'm finished. All my noodle bowls were in there too. That's the saddest thing I've heard all day. You know it. Anyhow, that's the deal. Good luck. Good, huh? Wait, what exactly is your request? My noodle stand. Find it. And the day you bring my baby back is the day you feast on as many noodles as you want. Of course, I make it so hot and salty, two bowls and kill a man. Then I'd really need defense. Speaking of defense, that's what I do. I'm a lawyer, not a detective. This is where I live. You drop by if you need any info, okay? Okay. Fair enough. Get it back today if you can, Paulo. I got noodles to make. Things have certainly taken a turn for the bazaar. Traffic accidents and noodle stand thieves. Um, actually, there was something I wanted to ask you about too, Apollo. Huh? I have a bad feeling about this. Oh boy, this music. Yeah, I already mentioned earlier, Punk, his hair definitely looks like ramen. That, that's the first thing I spotted when he popped up on my screen. I was like, he's got a noodle bowl on his head and ramen falling out for hair. <laughs> ah, listen to the lady's problem now. Don't be cruel. I lost something last night. That is, something was stolen. Hey, what's this? More thieving and skullduggery? Well, well, sorry. Well, um, someone stole a pair of my panties. Wait, I'm sorry. What? Why is this in the game? <laughs> panties? We're talking about panties in an Ace Attorney game? Oh, okay. Sure. All right. <laughs> Phoenix's like, no, Apollo, we're pretty much detectives. Get used to it. It's true, though. Phoenix had to do so much goddamn detective work in the original games. It's kind of absurd. 
And I guess if they did want to make the burger thing, they'd have to call him Mr. Regrub instead of Mr. Noodle. I guess that's true. But then how would he have a burger on his head? Also, his idle animation is him sucking on his hair noodle. Oh my god. But yes, I can say a panty uh, reference, or not just a reference, but anything to have to do with anything remotely, like, lewd, is, uh, yeah. Don't worry, this is totally the only time panties will ever be mentioned, he says, very sarcastically. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's hear about your panties being stolen, because this is related, right? Um, so they were, um, stolen, your, um, er... My panties, yes. Uh, right. Panties. Panties. That's a crying shame, that is, Trucy doll. Uh. I was alone in the office last night. I had hung my panties out the window where, where there to dry. Uh-huh. When a thief came and took them, my favorite panties. I ran after him. Give those back, I shouted. Wait! Well, that was certainly brave of you. But I lost him. Without those panties, I don't know what I'll do. A darn crying shame, yep. Well, at least the scene of the crime is convenient. <clears throat> I'll mark it on your map. I'll be heading home now. Remember, find my stand or there's an empty bowl in your future, Paulo. Uh, right. And you help out Trusty Doll here too, you hear? Alright, sure, sure. Things have certainly picked up, haven't they? We had no work yesterday, and now we have three cases. I... I guess. Let's see where we stand. Not in a courtroom, that's where. We stand here... Investigating a thing, I guess. Sure. Well, first item on our list... Phoenix Wright, Daddy's hit-and-run accident. We have to find the one who hit him. Who's gonna pay us for this again? And the second item... <laughs> Pretend you didn't ask that. <coughs> Mr. Aldoon's request to find his stolen stand, for which we stand to gain... Oh, for which we stand to gain a bowl of salty noodles. And the last request is mine, to find my stolen panties. That bowl of noodles is looking better and better. <laughs> you mean you don't want some girl's used panties? Is that what you're telling me, Apollo? Are you not a pervert? I mean, he doesn't have to be, I'm just... Give him the interrogation. It is a lawyer game, after all. <sighs> Let's go, Polly. To the streets. Aren't you enthusiastic? How could I not be? Let's crack these cases. You and me. <sighs> Guess we might as well get started. Let's see. A hit and run. Stolen stand. And last but not least, stolen panties. Oh, boy. All right. Anything new to examine? Just one last time before we go off on our investigative things. I don't know. All right. <clears throat> I guess not. All right. Off to the accident scene, I guess. We'll go back to Phoenix and talk to him later, I'm sure. So, to the accident scene. Here we go. Wow. Um, why are there ketchup and mustard everywhere? Why? Why? Kitaki? Why? Anyway, June 15th, accident scene. No time matters, just the day. So this is where Mr. Wright got hit by that car. According to the map, this is the place. Okay. Oh, that's paint. There's paint buckets. It's not ketchup and mustard, sorry. What a huge mansion. Apollo, there's a nice looking lady over there. Let's question her. Um, okay. I'm a little curious about the park over there too uh weird so there's cops something happened over here this is probably where the, the scene where somebody got shot but there's a dude trying to climb the fence i think that's more or is that a i don't even know is that a dude is that an old lady it's, somebody has some gray ass hair if it's if it's a dude a young dude i guess we'll find out whoa that is not what i was expecting this nice lady to look like She's got a fish face, man. All right, anyway, we'll get back to that in a second. Excuse me, um, can we have a few words with you? Whoa. Okay. Sure. Um. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this voice. 
you want something? Uh, whoa, that husky voice. Why am I suddenly sweating? Okay, she has a husky voice. Got it. That's quite a house you've got there. You must have a lot of money. Whoa. Money sounds like something my son would call his friends. This is the Kentucky family mansion, little girl. <laughs> uh, uh. You, you, get with the hair. You want something? Uh, me? Uh, no, no, not a thing. Uh, bye. <laughs> bye. Apollo, we can't leave without questioning her. What if she knows something? B but the Kataki family? They're the biggest organized crime syndicate in town. Oh, yeah? Okay, well, that is something I did not know. But all right, good to know. Oh, shit. If you're going to ask something, ask it. If you're mad enough. Ah, right. Yay, way to whip him into shape, ma'am. Does she know no fear? I'm Plum, Plum Kitaki, wife of the fourth head of the Kitaki family business. Plum Kitaki. There's something there. Plump? Plum Kitaki? Mm. Maybe it's a Japanese pun in there. Or maybe she's just called Plum Kataki. I don't know. Not everybody's name has to be a pun, but it almost is. Oh. Plump. Like plump. Yeah, I was saying, when I said it, I sounded like plump. Plump. I guess that's probably what it is. Plump. We'll go with plump. Because she's plump. But alright. Anyway, she's the wife of the head of the fucking crime syndicate, so that's good to know. Friends call me Little Plum. I, I'm Little Apollo Justice Attorney at Law. It looks like if looks could kill, this woman would be a mass murderer by now. Okay. Also, this music. That's a new one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to examine the area first before we get started talking to her. Wow, what a big house. And the gate is so big. The Kataki family is pretty big around these parts. I like the fox. It's so cute. Oh, that... A family's crest. From the old country. Your family crest? We're clever as the fox, and our teeth are sharp. So that's... Oh, so it's like a motto. You need a crest too, Apollo. Ooh, how about the scales of justice, or a lunar lander? Uh, I'll pass, thanks. <clears throat> There's paint splashed all over this gate. What a mess. Was this paint knocked over by the car that hit my daddy? That's right, Fit. And I'm left to clean up the mess. If you find whoever did this, bring the scoundrel by, would you? Of course. Then you can make them clean up their own mess. <laughs> You're cute. Naive, but cute. When I find whoever did this, you can bet I'll be doing some cleaning. Oh, shit. <laughs> that look on her face. Jesus. There's nothing I dislike so much as a mess. Ooh, I wish I could say cool things like that. I'll bet you do. <laughs> I'd laugh if my teeth weren't chattering so hard. She's terrifying, I know. Alright, so anyway, uh... Anything else? The dragon on the wall? A brightly painted dragon. Why do I get the feeling he's glaring at me? Those paints must have been to repaint this wall. That's right. I called in an artist to do the job right. Do the job right. He's the third so far. The third? Huh. The first spilled paint all over the entrance here. The second on my kimono. So I... No, no uh, don't tell me. It's better that I don't know. Uh, this is, Yeah, we don't want to know, dude. Uh, we're, we're good. We're good. Alright, so it doesn't seem like there's anything else to examine. So... Let's get to actually conversing with this lady. What about those Katakis? <clears throat> Little Plum? That's a really cute name for someone so... Yes? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Whoa! What is it, Apollo? How about you go through me when talking to her? Oh, sorry. That was not Plum talking. How about you go through me when talking to her, okay, Trucy? Huh? That seems like a bit of needless procedure. I'm a lawyer. I live for needless procedures. 
Oh, little girl, you should know. We're gangsters. Gangst? Oh, that means you're the bad guys. Trucy, through me, please. I'm begging you here. <laughs> the bad guys. I like the sound of that. I'm going to need some warm tea after this. It takes a lot of hard work to protect a family fortune. Things aren't as easy as they used to be for us bad guys. So you're saying that business is in a slump? Let's not ask about business if we can help it, please. Yeah, basically Yakuza Ace Attorney Edition. That's what it feels like right now. Anyway, what do you know about last night, lady? So there was supposedly a car accident here last night. Last night? Uh, uh, of course, uh, you wouldn't know about it. So sorry to bother you. <coughs> Wait. Uh, yeah? You're talking about that man, aren't you? The one who flew 30 feet and just walked away. That's my daddy! <laughs> I should have known. One of our capos... Capos thought he'd make a great point man. Capo? Point man? Um, could you avoid using too much, uh, industry lingo? In any case, it's been nothing but trouble. I've been cleaning up this mess since morning, but... Cleaning up this paint? Yeah, tell me about the paint. Yeah, what the fuck? Was this paint spilled at the time of the accident? It was around 9 last night. I heard a crashing noise. And found your father drowning in a sea of paint. So you came... So you came to... Oh. So you came to his rescue? You've... You've my husband, the boss, to thank for that. Uh, okay. The car that hit your father knocked over this paint. Then turned the corner and sped away. We're in the middle of repainting our wall, you see. I'm sure that dragon is glaring at me. But why are you out here cleaning it up? What do you mean? I mean, aren't you a gangster? Don't you have any goons to do your dirty work for you? Please, go through me when you wanna- <laughs> Don't be such a stiff lawyer, boy. I suppose we gangsters do have a certain image. Um, yes. But we're community-oriented gangsters, you see. The boss likes to give back to the people, see? How noble of him. I availed myself of the public facilities to get rid of all the garbage. Now there's just the paint on the street to deal with. Public facilities? I wonder if she means that trash can. Alright. Uh, cool. Can we examine the other side of this screen over here? Okay, it won't let me go over there. Will it? Uh, look around. Oh, right stick. There we go. What the fuck? Uh, I didn't expect to find a new person when I turned my head. Who's that? She's looking at the park. She's pretty. I bet she has a story. You know? There's something about her. Too bad she seems to be in a bit of a rush. Okay. Let's examine this particular area before we get into talking. People Park. People Park, huh? Kind of an odd name for such an empty place. I wonder why it's named that. Hey, there's something written on the gatepost. Huh? Oh yeah, it says donated by Big Winds Kataki. Big Winds Kataki. You mean the Kataki family built this park? It's so nice of them to give to the community like that. Let's not get too friendly with them, shall we? A gangster building a park? Odd move for a crime boss. What's up, copper? Personally, I'm a little more interested in the part in this park. You know what I think? I bet they're filming a movie. Let's go take a look. Maybe we'll see someone famous. Hey, off. Hey, hey miss, stay out of the park. He got mad at me. Um, did something happen here, officer? Huh? Uh, no. Move along. Nothing to see here. Why don't you kids go play someplace else? We're not kids and we're not playing. I'm an attorney. Something wrong? Ah, uh, Detective Sky. Uh, we're fine, ma'am. Nothing to report. Okay. This girl. So, you might think I don't know who this is, but I do. I have played the original Ace Attorney game in its entirety. I have played Case 5. The one that they added on is like DLC in a later version of Ace Attorney. The original Ace Attorney game with Phoenix Wright. So I do know who this is. In that game, 
I haven't played Case 5. I never did a video on Case 4 and 5 from Ace Attorney, the original, which I meant to do, like, a, you know, the abridged version. But this case was actually pretty huge. But this girl shows up. She basically, like, gets the ball rolling on the case. And it ends up being a big old conspiracy case with the whole uh, police department. Where, like, the basically the head of the police department is behind the whole thing. And uh, I believe it's this girl... His, her sister is the one that is to blame for the murder that happens. Um, and she's a, a, an attorney. I'm pretty sure she's an attorney, if I remember correctly. Th not this girl, but the, her sister is or was an attorney. I don't even know what she's doing now. I'm pretty sure that was the case. She's either an attorney or a police detective or something, but I'm pretty sure she was an attorney. Yeah, she was the chief prosecutor. There you go. She was the chief prosecutor. She was accused of the murder. This girl came to Phoenix to have, get help. And yeah, I don't remember what her sister's name was, but I remember this girl's name was Emma Sky. That's why they said Miss Sky. Pretty sure her name's Emma Sky. And she's like a, a forensic girl or something. I forget what she's like. She's some kind of scientific kind of like she was she basically they introduce her in the original game to like help you learn how to examine things a little closer like items and stuff she's like a csi person there you go her okay her sister name was lana sky okay got it thank you just giving you guys the brief summary of the fact that i know who this is and so i know what she's about at least i don't really remember her personality much other than she was a big csi person that she was not really into the forensics side of things um and investigating and all that but it makes sense that she's in this game grown up and she might be able to help apollo here a lot so here we go detective wait also she might be a detective now apparently maybe she's gonna be our new gumshoe because god if it's been enough years gumshoe should have retired by now right Anyway, why is she wearing a lab coat? You're hardly one to comment on... Oh, you're hardly one to comment on how people are dressed. And these kids are... Curiosity Seekers, ma'am. They claim to be lawyers. Ah, why don't you kids run along and play someone, someplace else? I'm trying to decide what I want to do with her voice. I don't know what I want to do with it yet. Especially since I know she's going to be important to this series in general. So, mm, we'll see. Look, we're not... Or I might spill something on that pretty face of yours. Whoa. Jesus. What a dose of experimental hydroxyl... Hydroxyacylundocitre... What? I can't even read that one. It's so long. Hydroxyacylundocitre... Sure. Come again? What's hydroxy stuff? Whatever it is, it doesn't sound good. Let's go, Trucy. Try to keep out of the riffraff, if you would. Yes, ma'am. Alright. How are we going to get more information like this? Why don't we ask that nice woman across the street? Oh, yes, that nice woman. Alright, nice woman, you must be referring to the big lady. We'll go talk to her more in a second, but we need to finish examining over here. But here we go. I gotta say, I'd really like to know what happened here. Hey, I said no one goes in. Unless you want a face full of hydroxy... Who's a what's it? <laughs> hydroxy yada yada what's it? That's what he said. Huh. No dice. I just wanted that to have a check mark. Anything, if it doesn't have a check mark, I examine, goddammit. There's a big trash can on the way to, into the park. I guess we could check it out. A detective's life sure is a hard one. I'm an attorney, actually. Huh? Hmm. Two pieces of garbage with paint on them. These are slippers. They look like those slippers you get at the hospital. Interesting. I'm trying to see what they say. The, the Mara... What does it say? The Maractus? I don't know. We'll find out what it says, I'm sure. Anyway, yeah. Look at this, Apollo. Does this, doesn't this go on a car? It's a side view mirror. Looks like it was torn off when it was smacked into, when it smacked into something. Or someone. Wait, you don't think... I do. This could be from the car that hit Mr. Wright. Wow, and he took it off and he took off its mirror? I never knew Daddy was so strong. I only have room in my pocket for one of these though. Which do you want me to take? Oh my god. You can only take one of them? Uh yeah. Anyway. 
adding the check marks is a super good quality of life edition. Is that only in this like collection version, or do they add that on like all games past the first trilogy? I'm gonna take the mirror, I guess. Seems like the more pertinent piece of evidence, even though those slippers are have paint on them, right? But anyway, torn off the car that hit Mr. Wright was found in the front of the Kentucky mansion. Got it. I'm guessing I can swap if I want. Yeah. You know what? These are the slippers that the lady said she had her paint spilled on them. Alright, well anyway, what's going on over here? Looks like there's some trouble by the park gate. I smell an, an incident! Ma'am, there's no entry to the park. Now don't you tell me where I can't go, young fella! I always walk through this park on my way home. Please get down from there. You'll hurt yourself, ma'am. It's quite the determined old lady. Indeed. So it's an old lady, which makes it even more hilarious. Um, okay, so the trash can, and there's nothing else to examine here. Alright, well, I guess let's go back and talk to this lady. Okay, and she's gone. Okay, she's not gone. Never mind. Wait. Yeah, okay. <sighs> You think that's supposed to be Wendy Old Bag back there? Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, let's talk to her about the park real quick, I guess. Can I ask you a question? What? Uh, what happened in the park across the street? Oh, yes. Quite the commotion. Chicago Lightning, as the boss would say. Chicago, huh? Gunfire. Someone was killed. Strange circumstances, too. You're kidding. What a morning. Trouble everywhere. The park, the gate, even our house. Did something happen at your house, too? A crime without honor, without remorse. It's a private matter. Want to hear about it? Somehow, I don't think no is an acceptable answer, Polly. Oh, that was Trucy talking. Sorry. Jesus Christ. I, am not, I need to pay more attention to who's saying what here. Anyway, let's learn about this private matter. So, what happened to your house? Bloomers, last night. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. Me, Little Plum Kentucky, the victim of a panty snatcher. Oh my god. Do we just have a fucking panty uh, bandit out on the loose right now? The fuck? What? So it wasn't just my panties that were stolen. Got you too, did they? Poor thing. Like I said, whoever did this is a hardened criminal. It wasn't you, was it? N no, of course not. Mercy. I've heard word that panties have been disappearing lately. Lately. And the missing panties all have something in common. It's hard to imagine Trucy's and Mrs. Kataki's panties having much in common. I just imagined Mrs. Kataki's panties. Ugh. I know. We'll find your bloomers, too. Great. Show me what you're made of. What have you gotten me into this time, Trucy? What the... Okay, this girl's back. Hello. Um... Hello. This is awkward. Can you quit staring and blinking at me? Okay. Well, can you, can you say something? That girl from before. Oh, welcome home, sweetie. Oh? Uh, um, hello, mother. She's a Kataki too? Yes, also. Um, miss, miss. Here, our flyer. Right? Anything agency? Wait, anything agency? That's not what it was called before. Why is it my gut telling me it's the same criminal behind all these cases? Of course it is, Omega. Why wouldn't it be? That's that's what the beginning of this case basically said, is that every little crime sometimes, being, when the big crime happens, it's all connected. All the little crimes along the way are all connected to this big crime, which is the guy, whoever got shot, probably. So, we'll see. Anyway, apparently they changed talent agency to anything agency, which, you know, nice audible, guys. Yeah, do you like the new flyer? So, um, this is our defense attorney, Mr. Apollo Justice. Attorney? Drop by our office. We'll be waiting. Uh, goodbye. Hmm. I'm sure we'll see her again at some point. Why did you give her our flyer? I don't know. She seemed like she could use some help. She's the heiress to a gangster dynasty. She doesn't need our help. 
I wouldn't be so sure. I mean, she probably has a good instinct for that, not gonna lie. Alright, I don't know if there's anything else we can examine here, but we might be able to present this BZ some stuff. Let me double check, there's nothing new to examine real quick. Okay. I might be able to present her with this. Or, shit, let's just present everything. It's always good to present everything just in case you get some piece of dialogue that you don't expect. Sorry, kid, I got no idea what you're talking about. Okay, that was a no-go. Okay, same. What about this? Can you tell me anything about this mirror? That's probably from the car that knocked that fellow across the street. Right, that makes it, that makes this an, a valuable clue. Let me know if you find that car, would you? You splash Kentucky paint, you pay the price. Indeed. Okay, that was it, huh? Alright, well, you know what? I got a better idea then. Or I should say, I have another idea then. Not a better one so much. Is I'm going to take these slippers, and I'm going to show those to her. Because I'm pretty sure these are the slippers she mentioned. Let's see if she gets mad about it. I want to know. Are you going to be mad if I show you these slippers right now? Don't be mad. Oh, really? Oh, I thought for sure. I thought for sure she was going to say something about those. Wow. Well, that disappoints me. Well, let's swap back to the mirror and then we'll uh, go look around. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you can only carry one thing. That just seems like fucking pain, but sure. Let's just swap back to the other item. And then we'll work our way uh, to the other scene, I guess. Because there doesn't seem to be anything else for me to do around ya. At least not at the moment. So, we shall move on. Anyway, I have some good instincts. There gets to be a lot of hidden dialogue in games. Yeah, you should always examine or present everything to everyone if you can. Because something might pop up extra dialogue-wise. Some Even shit. Even something important that you need to know might pop up that you don't expect. You know what I mean? So, it's always good to do shit like that to every person you can investigate with. But anyway, let's go to the stand theft area now where the... Where the noodle place was stolen. No! Save the light. Anyway, June 15th, scene of the stand theft. So, what's this place? This would be Mr. Eldoon's house, silly. Oh, so this is where his stand was stolen from. I can see a piece of evidence lying on the ground already. Oh, yeah? Hey! Wait. Huh. Maractus Clinic. That's exactly where those slippers are from, by the way. That's what the clin that's what the that's what the slippers say on it, for sure. Bargain, three shots for the price of one. Look, there's a police car parked over there. You're right. What's with the sparkly entrance? What a what is this place? A hospital? There's a sign, Maractus Clinic. Sorry, I was trying to look at Maractus and see if it's backwards spelled something, but it does not. It's Sitkarem. Anyway. Huh? Oh, that's where the thief went. The thief? The one who snatched my panties. He ran into this clinic last night. W wait, maybe that police car is here to find my panties. Um, yeah. Did you report it to the police? I, I doubt it. Well, there's only one way to be sure. Let's investigate. Ah, there you are, sonny. There he is. I, was, I figured he'd be in this area. Well, did you find anything yet? Uh, um... No, not yet. The longer you loaf around here, the saltier your victory bowl gets. Just remember that. This bowl of noodles is sounding less like a payment and more like a punishment. <laughs> you probably missed a bunch of jokes about panties so far. I mean, I wouldn't say it was heavily a panty joke section, but there was a lot of panties mentioned. Sure, sure. Alright, um, let's start by examining the area. It says no! No! That's quite a sign. I take it that's new as opposed to old. Come on, man. Ah, you like it? Made it myself, I did. I meant to write noodles, but ran out of space. <laughs> Prior planning prevents poor performance. Lucky for me, it spells a word all by itself and spruces up my image, it does. 
does have a certain power of willful denial thing. Go for it. No! Yeah, so I was thinking too. When I first saw it, I wanted to do that too. No! Does he got any panties hanging up here? This house is, well, it's old. It's been well loved, that's for sure. I've lived here with my wife for many years now. I've got character though, just like my soup. I always thought character was a positive thing. <laughs> wow. Negative, sir. Negative. It looks like the oil drum is connected to that sink over there. Collecting rainwater to do the dishes. How environmentally conscious. You don't think he uses rainwater to cook his noodles and to make the broth, do you? Oh, I'm sure he finds the best water money can buy. Taste is business, you know. Taste is his business, you know. Look, that sign over there. Eldunes only uses water from all natural sources. I think I'll take a rain check on eating here. Yum, 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 yum. Gotta find all the hidden panty Easter eggs. Absolutely we do. There's a handwritten sign here. It says, Save the Light. Save the Light, indeed. Mr. Eldoon's house is practically in the dark here. I guess the hospital clinic next door blocks the sunlight. Everything's gone wrong since they built this monstrosity. Broth needs sun or it rots. What's a man to do? They just want my customers to get food poisoning so they can turn a pretty profit. That seems like a lot of trouble to go through for a few extra patients. Yeah, they want they want your patients or your fucking customers to get food poisoning so they can come next door. And get, that sounds like a something that you would be a part of, sir. Although they wouldn't want to come back and eat at your place, so never mind on that. Is this is this yours, Mr. Eldoon? Hey, that there's the heart and soul of Eldoon's noodles. The bowl absorbs my salty soup. Pretty soon, it's gonna taste like just like noodles. Wow, it does smell like noodles. All my other bowls got taken away with my stand. Get it back for me, shiny boy. I'm begging you. All right. Custom made Eldoon's noodle bowls. Eldoon's noodle bowls decorated with Eldoon's noodles mascot. Probably going to have to help us use that to help us investigate. But all right. That's been examined. Let's examine this tarp, I guess. That's the place right there. That's where I kept my stand. Covered all nice and pretty with that blue tarp there. So you use this plastic sheet to cover your stand at night. I see. You see? What? Did you figure out what was stolen? Why it was stolen? Well, no, but it does suggest that the thief knew what he, he or she was looking for. They clearly knew what was under that sheet. So it wasn't one of those casual drive-by stand snatchers, you mean? Not bad, sonny boy. Not bad at all. Yeah, I was gonna say, they just kind of untarped it and took that shit. So somebody knew what they were taking. That is actually is a pertinent clue. It really is. Look, a doggy. Good boy, good boy, Salty. I'm sure the dog has a real name, Trucy. Yep, sure does. Name's Spoon. And it's a she, by the way. Spoon doesn't seem so lively. She didn't get her bowl of salty broth this morning, that's why. Poor little thing. <sighs> Apollo, let's fight that stand soon for Spoon's sake. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure dogs aren't supposed to eat noodles. Is there any, any science behind that? Is there any science behind that at all? Can dogs not eat noodles? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't seem like there's anything else to examine here, but let's go ahead and boop over here and see what's up with this. I'd understand if there was an ambulance outside, but a police car? Maybe they're tax evaders. Ah, so sorry, miss. No, no, no going into the clinic today. Did something happen? Huh? Uh, oh, no. Uh, nothing to see here. Move along. You'll have to find someplace else to, pay to play doctor. Do we look like the right age to be playing doctor? The fuck? We need a little more info on this Maractus clinic. We could ask Mr. We could ask Mr. Eldoon. He is their neighbor after all. And we should check out that garage. What if the thief who stole my panties is still in there? <sighs> what if? What if? Also, who the fuck is a bargain special on taking on getting shots? You can have one tetanus shot or three. It costs the same price. <laughs> Bring all three of your children just in case. Looks like they have a special offer going on. Three shots for the price of one. Ooh, now's our chance, Apollo. Chance for what? I don't need any shots, thank you. 
Whoever runs this clinic, they seem pretty business minded. Indeed. Fucking weird. This song actually reminds you of the Justice for All Search opening song. I'll have to listen to that later, DJ. That doorway sure is sparkly. The Maractus Clinic, huh? Looks more like a casino parlor than a hospital. They must be quite profitable. Funny, it looks close. Maybe they're on vacation today. No, there's police shutting it down. Can't you? Didn't we already establish that? Okay. Nothing else to examine here, it seems. So let's just uh, talk to the homie. What's up, dude? So your stand. Eldoon's noodles, was it? I passed out from father to son. That stand's been a, seen its share of salt. Mm hmm. Salt runs in the family, you might say. I bet high blood pressure does, too. So, uh, your stand, Eldoon's noodles, was stolen. Oh, it wasn't just the stand that was stolen, sonny boy. I lost those wobbly wheels, my salt crusted stew pot, my stained sign. I didn't just lose the stand, I lost a legend. No one steals a legend and gets away with it on my watch. Let's find that legend, Apollo. Isn't it about time you bought a new one anyway? <laughs> if you had the money, maybe. Maybe it's that level from Psychonauts 2 that was both a casino and a hospital. Oh yeah. Classic. That was a creative level. Psychonauts 2 was a good game. The more I look back on it, that was a good game. That was a good time. We had fun with that. Alright, let's tell me more about the stand, homie. Are there any more details you can give me about the stand? You bet, sonny boy! It happened last night! I was blowing my whistle like always, crying the town I was. Smell of broth filled the streets, thick and salty. Hair in my mouth, thick and not salty. Sorry, I'm just picking a hair out of my mouth. <laughs> I got home, well, right before 10 p.m., I reckon. Guess he's not aiming for that late night market. I washed my bowls and gave the wheels a squirt of grease, and then I went inside. When did you notice it had been stolen? Early this morning, before the sun rose. Work starts early. Did that many people eat noodles for breakfast? I'm washed up on the salty shores of ruination. That stand had my whole life in it. Nay, my whole being. They took everything? All my soup stock, my noodles, my bowls, and my dreams. At least they left one bowl. Look, there on the ground. If you don't find that stand today, then I'll be forced to walk the streets peddling that bowl. My last bowl. <laughs> okay. Please, I'm under enough pressure here as it is. Alright, tell me about the garage, homie. That's it. That's where the thief who snatched my panties ran to. It's a crying shame, that is. If they have to steal, make it my loincloth, not some pretty girl's panties. You wear a loincloth, bro? The garage, right? You don't like, uh, you don't think the thief lives here, do you? Fair. I wouldn't put it past that good-for-nothing doctor. Hmm, do I take a little animosity here? Let's make sure to check out that garage thoroughly. Alright, that might be a place we're going to get to explore and examine here in a minute. If they'll let us in. Hey, do you think something happened next door? There's a police car out front. Probably gave someone food poisoning, I'll bet. If anyone's at risk of giving someone food poisoning. That police car got here this morning, actually. I asked what they were up to, but they wouldn't even tell me. The neighbor. Frah. Hmm. Not that I was surprised much. That doctor works for the wrong crowd. It was just a matter of time before he got what was coming to him. Frah. The wrong crowd? Never you mind about that. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, can we present this dude some stuff? Sorry, Santa Boy, my interest in, is in for my stand and precious little house. Get cracking on that case. Find my stand, I'm begging you. Alright. Alright, nothing there. Nothing there. You can tell my boys by the Mr. Salty logo. The mascot of Eldoon's Noodles. They come to the stand, they sit, they drink deep from that bowl. And when they see the bottom, their face looks just like Mr. Salty's. Genius, no? Very high concept. You can't ply a trade if you don't love the tools, remember that. Yes, sir. Trucy has a thing for professionals, clearly. I mean, anybody you can learn from, am I right? You know what, something else? I don't know if it'll let me do it right now. It doesn't seem like there's an option to look at um, people. 
you know, people that get added to the record. Because sometimes that's a thing where you can present certain people you've met. But it doesn't seem like that's an option for me yet. I'm assuming that will be later. We're still kind of early in the game, to be fair. Still got to bring us along slowly. Alright, well, I guess we're done here for the moment. Oh, it will let us go into the garage. Alright, then let's do that. Oh, boy. Hey, look. Evidence. Evidence, dear Watson. Evidence. Too easy. Alright. This is the place! This is where that panty snatcher ran! Are you sure? Maybe. Let's look for clues. Clues to a panty snatching! Clues like a pair of panties! Um, Trucy? Could you try not saying panties so many times? Clues! Panties! Panties! Clues! Clues! Panty! Okay, these are the obvious things. These are the obvious things. Let's look around at the other un unobvious things first. Like this skeleton. What the fuck are you about? Also, cat! Eek! Someone's there! Oh, it's just a gold-painted human skeleton. Just a human skeleton and painted gold? There's a mannequin hand waving to us from the box behind the skeleton. This place just screams hospital storage, don't you think? It screams something, that's for sure. Screams what the fuck is what it screams. Look, it's a folding ladder. Polly, that's called a step ladder. Come on. A step ladder? How is that different from a regular ladder then? It's a much more complex piece of machinery. It's like two ladders stuck together. So you admit that basically it's a ladder, right? Wait, huh? You have to look past the form, at the essence of the thing. Uh, can we talk about something else? It's like, you really want to argue about a fucking ladder right now? Get the fuck over it already. Kitty! Hey, a kitty cat! Here, kitty, kitty, kitty! <laughs> Meow. It's not coming down. We do look like... We do look kind of suspicious, you have to admit. It's okay, kitty cat. His hair won't hurt you. It's okay, kitty cat. She won't make you disappear in her hat. <laughs> Alright. Anything else over here on this side? No? Okay. Well, let's start with whatever this is. There's something about this car. Let's take a closer look. Chug chug. Chug chug. There's so many things about this car. There's a thing under the car. There's a thing in the tailpipe of the car. There's a broken fucking mirror. The cat is clearly the most important clue here. Yeah, I agree. Alright, well let's just start with the thing in the tailpipe. That reminds me. I once read a record of a case that Mr. Bright worked on many years ago. Apparently there was this car with a piece of cloth shoved into the tailpipe. That piece of cloth turned out to be a vital clue to solving the case. Wow! I remember that case record whenever I'm checking out a car. And I always check the tailpipe. Everyone's gotta have a hobby, I guess. Wouldn't it be funny if... Hey! There's something in there! Do I remember which case had the tailpipe thing? Is it the case that I was just talking about that's like case 5 of the original game? Because if it's not, I don't know if I remember exactly. Hey, it was. Okay, cool. I got that right then. Sweet. Yeah, it's not one I played for you guys on screen, on stream or recording or on a video or anything. So, surprised I remembered as well as I do. But it was such a long, involved case. I remember a lot of it. Like there was two different, like different police officer detectives that were on the case too. I forget the girl's name and what she looked like. But also there was like this cowboy-looking dude that was a detective or a policeman or whatever. Yeah, it was a it was a hell of a case. I remember, and like the the head of the police who was like behind the whole thing or the head of the whatever, he was like the um, he looked like Ganondorf. <laughs> I remember that. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, wouldn't it be funny if hey, there's something in there? We called it. What? Wait a second. Are these your? Oh my god! Did we find her panties immediately? Ah, my panties! Wow. Well, case solved, guys. Case two done. We did it, guys. We found the car that hit. We found the car that hit Phoenix. We found the panties. Game over. We don't need to help anyone else. We're done. 
Glad we uh, hope you enjoyed case two.